Many scholars, Kaufman among them, have noted that the literature of the classical prophets is most clearly and strongly characterized by a vehement denunciation of the moral decay and social injustice of the period. It really doesn't matter what period. <laughs> vehement denunciation of moral decay and social injustice is the way Kaufman phrases it. Amos criticizes the sins of the nation. He's critical of everyone, the middle class, the government, the king, the establishment, the priesthood. They're all, they're all plagued by a superficial kind of piety. For Amos, as for all the prophets we'll be looking at, the idea of covenant prescribes a particular relationship with Yahweh, but not only with Yahweh, also with one's fellow human beings, right? The two are interlinked. It's a sign of closeness to Yahweh that one is concerned for Israel's poor and needy, right? The two are, com are completely intertwined and interlinked. And so Amos denounces the wealthy, he denounces the powerful, and the way they treat the poor. I'm going to be reading some passages from Amos to illustrate some of these themes. So Amos chapter 4, <coughs> verses 1 to 3. And listen to the dramatic rhetoric that's used. Hear this word, you cows of Bashan on the hill of Samaria. It's the capital of the northern kingdom, Israel. Who defraud the poor, who rob the needy, who say to your husbands, bring and let's carouse. My Lord God swears by his holiness. Behold, days are coming upon you when you will be carried off in baskets and to the last one in fish baskets and taken out of the city, each one through a breach straight ahead and flung on the refuse heap. It's a wonderful pun here because the wealthy women of Samaria are referred to as cows of Bashan. Now Bashan is an area that's very rich pasture land in the Transjordan. And also it's very common in Canaanite literature to refer to the nobility and even to gods with terms like bull or ram or cow. These were not insulting terms as they might be in our culture. These were in fact terms that did not offend. These were very complimentary terms. So when he refers to the cows of Bashan, he speaks to the women of Samaria as the cows of Bashan, he's flattering them to begin with. But the pun is quite wonderful because these women are going to end up like fat cows as slabs of meat in the butcher's basket or in the fish basket, which you know, is flung out on the refuse heap once it's spoiled, right? So he takes that term cows of Bashan and, and leads it to this horrendous end. Amos 6, verse 1 and verses 4 through 7. This is another scathing attack on the idle life of the carefree rich who ignore the plight of the poor. Woe to those at ease in Zion, of course that's the capital of the southern kingdom, Jerusalem, and those confident on the hill of Samaria, the northern kingdom, you notables of the leading nation on whom the house of Israel pin their hopes. They lie on ivory beds, lolling on their couches, feasting on lambs from the flock and on calves from the stalls. They hum snatches of song to the, lute, to the tune of the lute. They account themselves musicians like David. They drink straight from the wine bowls and anoint themselves with the choicest oils. But they are not concerned about the ruin of Joseph. Assuredly, right soon they shall head the column of exiles. They shall loll no more at festive meals. It's a great image of them lying about as the head of the nation. Well, they'll be, heading, they'll be at the head of the nation as it moves into exile. And on an archaeological note, I understand that in Samaria, they have, in fact, uncovered all kinds of ivory furniture and ivory coverings that would then be attached to furniture. So the image of them lolling on ivory couches in Samaria, apparently, makes a lot of sense.